Family of late Peter Ndaula Salongo prays that God may gr prays that the Lord may grant his soul eternal rest. They also pray that they remain strengthened by the grace of the Lord. <coughs> Agnes Nampera thanks God for the gift of life and her family. She prays for her marriage, children, husband, friends, relatives, and blessings in her job. Mr. and Mrs. Muyanja Paul thank God for the gift of life, for the performance of their children in the final exams, and seek God's grace in their next levels of life and academics. And again, in a special way, we want to thank the Lord for the gift of Jacinta, who is celebrating her birthday today in this Eucharist. We want to commend her to the Lord, that the Lord may grant her good life. We also, in this sacrifice of my spring thanksgiving for the gift of her parents and her siblings and the many people that journey with her in her vocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today, we remember Saints Pontian and Hippolytus. Pontian was a pope, and Hippolytus a priest. Both of them died as martyrs. What is so humbling about them is to know that a pope was reduced to a slave, and also a priest was reduced to a slave. In this Eucharist, we remember to pray for all those who have been caught up in the web of slavery. We know today that slavery has been modernized, and we are all, always listening to cases of modern slavery. We pray for the grace we need each day uh, to live as God's children. For the times we have not lived as God's children, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous faults. Therefore, as the blessed memory of God, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on each one of us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. May the precious long suffering of the just, O oh Lord, we pray, bring us a greater increase of love for you and always prompt in our hearts constancy in the holy faith 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the name of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. In those days, Joshua gathered all the to shake him and summon the elders, the heads, the judges, and officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, your father, lived of old beyond the Ephrates. Tela, the father of Abraham and of Noah. And they, they served their gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. I gave him Isaac, and to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. And I gave Esau the hill country of Seir to possess, but Jacob and his children went down to Egypt. And I sent Moses and Aaron, and I prayed Egypt with what I did in the midst of, of it. And afterwards I brought you out. Then I brought your fathers out of Egypt, and you came to the sea, and the Egyptians pursued your fathers with the chariots and horsemen to the Red Sea. And when they cried to the Lord, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians and made the sea come upon them and cover them. And your eyes saw what I did to Egypt. And you lived in the wilderness a long time. Then I brought you to the land of the Amorites who lived on the other side of the Jordan and they fought with you, and I gave them into your hand, and you took possession of their land, and I destroyed them before you. Then Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, arose and fought against Israel, and he sent and invited Balaam, the son of Beor, to curse, to curse you. But I would not listen to Balaam before he blessed you. So I delivered you out of his hands. And you went over the Jordan and came to Jericho. And the men of Jericho fought against you. And also the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, and the Gishites, the, Hav the Havitites, and the Jebusites, and I gave them into your hand, and I said, and I sent the hornet before you, which drove, uh, which, dro which drove them out before you. The two kings of the Amorites, it was not by your sword or by your bow. I gave you a land on which you had not labored, and cities which you had not built, and you, and you dwell therein, you eat the fruits of the vineyards and the oliveyard which you did not plant. And this is the word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm, Psalm 136. The response is, For his mercy endures forever. Amen. 
for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for his good, for his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods, for his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endures forever. For his mercy endures forever. Through the desert his people he led, for his mercy endures forever. Nations in their greatness he struck, for his mercy endures forever. Kings in their splendor he threw, for his mercy endures forever. For his mercy endures forever. He gives their land as a heritage, for his mercy endures forever. A heritage for Israel's servant, for his mercy endures forever. And he snatched us away from our foes, for his mercy endures forever. For his mercy endures forever. Praise God, alleluia. Praise God, amen. Praise God, alleluia. Praise God, amen. Alleluia, alleluia. allowed you to divorce your wives but from the beginning it was not so the Lord be with you and with your spirit a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew Glory to you, Lord. at that time Pharisees came up to Jesus and tested him by asking is it lawful to divorce one's wife for any cause he answered, Have you not read that he who made them from the beginning made them male and female and said, For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall live. Why then did Moses command one to give a certificate of divorce and to put her away? For your hardness of heart, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. And I said to you, whoever divorces his wife except for unchastity and marries another commits adultery. And he who marries a divorced woman, only those to whom It is given for their eunuchs who have been so from birth and their eunuchs who have been made eunuchs by men and their eunuchs who have who have made themselves eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven he who is able to receive this let him receive it the gospel Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It is joy to celebrate again the Word of God in this Holy Eucharist and to celebrate again the birthday of Jacinta. And we are, we are thanking the Lord for her parents and for the siblings and for the many people that uh, walk with Jacinta to make her who as she is. All of us usually we have a story to tell. We have a biography that we have walked. We have a history that we have lived and we have a million reasons to live in appreciation of our history or not. And Joshua in the first reading reminds the Israelites of their history and not specifically the history just to know the history but he reminds them that the God whom they worship has been with them from their beginning. And that God has been the God of great deeds. He has been with them to Egypt, to the land of slavery, 
That same God in their history has led them out of slavery. He has made them go through the wilderness. He reminds them that God has been at the center of providing for them and has led them to the promised land. And Joshua seems to provoke them that do they remember that God who has been with them from the beginning, the God of Jacob, Isaac, the God of Abraham. Do they have a full grip on that God who has been with them through all situations of life? A God who has been in charge of their ancestors in this world because of his son. We are beneficiaries of these good things. And I'm looking at a special way today when we are celebrating the birthday of Jacinta, that she too has a history she has lived. And she lives in appreciation of many good things that the Lord has done for her. Just like each one of us, Joshua is reminding us our God of great deeds in our history, anchoring us in the present, but also reminding us about how he is securing our future. What are those moments that we have prayed with our history? What are those moments that we have learned from our history? What are those moments that we have lived in appreciation of the God at the center of our wars, at the center of our preservation? And that's the God who Joshua is giving to the Israelites so that in their memory, their faith may be lifted up above the threshold in the gospel reading, again, we are reminded about the vocation to love. The vocation to love. Jesus says, for those who are married, no divorce. In the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 28, it reminds us, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. And I'm grateful to God that we are here with <coughs> parents and their children. What a beauty for us to celebrate today. The gift of marriage. And children. It is true that we all, we are products of the fruits of marriage, of fruits of two people coming together in love, in companionship, in friendship, mutual fidelity. And as parents, we for sure we celebrate the gift of our, pair, of our children. As parents, we celebrate the gift of our children. And that's why we are, we are here and in a special way celebrating uh, Jacinta's birthday. And uh, I was also so humbled by the prayer intention of Mr. and Mrs. Mayanya praying for their children. And it's so good. It's so good to hear the parents praying for us as children. Because it's not always every day that you'll hear this. But it's not that every parent will always remember to pray for their children. But it's so good. And it's always a blessing uh, to, have, to have a parent praying for their children. And also... By that, the children are also lifted up in faith and in understanding the love that God has for them through uh, their parents. It is true that conjugal love mirrors the eternal love of God. What God would do to us here is what the parents do to us here as children. And we need to pray in thanksgiving for that. Responsibilities. God gives us responsibilities <coughs> And he journeys with us to fulfill them. Another point of meditation for us today in the gospel reading is the voluntary acceptance of celibacy. When you want to become a priest or you become a seminarian, or you want to join to become a nun, uh, it's voluntary. It's freely you, you freely go for it. No one should be there to say, hey, you go, you go. No one pushes you for it. You freely accept uh, to pick up this lifestyle for God. Celibacy, like in the letters of St. Paul, is a sign of fidelity to God. It's a sign of undivided attention uh, to God. To celebrate the joys, in the, the, the joys in the values of the kingdom of God. Just to be like Jesus. There are quite a number of theories about whether Jesus married or not. And sometimes there are movies to show that Jesus maybe had a relationship and things like that. There are many things going on in the world. And yet, we still have men and women who have lived to celebrate the gift of celibacy, who have lived to be like Jesus. 
consecrate themselves in the Lord and they have yielded undivided attention and they have lived to celebrate the joys of the values of the kingdom of God. We have seen many religious taking care of, of, of children. We have seen children, little ones, infants, thrown at the gates of nuns and priests. We have seen priests, nuns, sisters, brothers, taking the responsibility of nurturing vocations. We see in the church that the religious take care of many souls in hospitals, in schools, in nursing homes, in the houses of the elderly, in parishes, and in so many ways. And that is a way also to give life, to celebrate the love that God has for us and, and for the whole world. We pray in this Eucharist that each day we may live to celebrate God as a God of our history, our present, and the God of our future. We pray that God continues to anchor us in the fruits of marriage. We pray that God continues to make us celebrate uh, celibacy as that that is life-giving. And lastly, we have one vocation, all of us. Whether married or not, our vocation is to love. sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our glory of his culture. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered. By your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We give them unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross, brought peace to all creation. Therefore he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him, he has become the source of eternal salvation. 
and so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of the cross, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make therefore, make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of this death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the blood and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your child spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, an apostolic administrator, the whole order of bishops, and all the clergy, religious, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Remember also our brothers and sisters who are falling asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on each one of us, all we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, most especially St. Charles Ranga and companions, St. Denis of God, our patron, St. Pontian and Hippolytus, St. Andrew Basset, Blessed Basil Moru, Venerable Patrick Payton, all the saints named after each one of us. And all the saints who are pleased this throughout the ages, we may marry to be quiet to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of our years, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We can wave to one another as a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy I should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the blood and blood of Christ protect us and bring us to life everlasting. Amen.
The bread that I'll give, says the Lord, is my flesh for the life of the world. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed serve us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful Father, we humbly beseech your protection against this scourge of coronavirus, which has thrown the world into incredible agony and tears. Guide all those who are the front line in the research of its origin, cause, and cure, so that they may be saved from the storm it is now spreading. Enlighten the medical personnel, the leaders, and the religious, so that they may respectively and faithfully take care of us bodily and spiritually. Help us to be professional and take care of the sick, and to be kind to them, as we also pray for our leaders and all volunteers, who are helping to extinguish the fire of this pandemic. And the right cure and concrete ways of exterminating this courage. We pray for quick recovery for all those who have been either affected or infected. As we confront this challenging argument, help us to be firm in faith, hope, and love. Give us grace to work for the common good, thus helping each other. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Let's bow down our heads and we pray for God's blessing. The Lord be with you. And with May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he let his face shine upon you and show you his mercy. Amen. May he turn his countenance towards you and give you his peace. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Remain in the peace of Christ. Yeah.